Hey you gorgeous people, I'm Manka from Well.com. Today we're going to be giving you four quick pig tips in under four minutes. So let's go ahead and beat that clock. Ding! Four minutes on the clock, so let's get into it. So tip number one is using the correct filler size with the base metal. A lot of welders I see is always using thicker filler wire than the base metal. I'm gonna show you what happens when you use thicker filler wire on thinner base metal, all right? So first we're gonna just establish our puddle. All right, we got our puddle established. See, look, I can't even melt the filler wire. But I'm gonna try to, so I'm gonna kinda, see how it's balling up, but I lose my puddle. So I wanna get more amps to melt that filler wire. So I'm giving more amps. And I guarantee I'm getting lots of penetration. And I can see that puddle. Look how big that puddle is. All right, I'll even try to back it off. Look, see, I'm just waiting on, uh, waiting on it to melt. And see how I got my heat, my tungsten's over the uh, filler wire. It should be like that. And I should be dipping into it like that. But see, I'm only melting a little bit off. You wanna definitely use the correct filler wire. So this is where we started and did the weld right here. So let's talk about right here. So I created my puddle. I didn't add no filler wire. Then I, was, then I started bringing my filler wire into the puddle and I was barely melting it. I, like, I mean, it was barely getting it done. Then I was giving it more power, more amps. You could tell I was creating a bigger puddle so I could melt that filler wire. Then I was like, okay, I'm getting ready to blow through. But you can actually see how big that puddle is. It was like, it's huge. It, I was surprised I didn't blow through. Then as soon as I seen that, I brought my tungsten on top of my uh, filler wire. And I was focusing all the heat on the thicker part, but it, it's not the right way. Um, that's, that's what we're doing here. Then I came back on the base metal, tried a different way, and still wasn't working. So that's the front side. The back side, that's how bad that is. I mean, that's the penetration, not the front side, the penetration. That's pretty bad. So let's go ahead and I'll show you the right way with the right tungsten and the right filler wire. Drop down and filler wire. I put a mic on this, it measures 19 thousandths. But on the spool it says 023, so we are smaller than the base metal, that's good. And also I want to mention I'm running 040 tungsten. You could do 020 tungsten. So let's go ahead and jump on this base metal. So I'm barely pressing the pedal, make sure I'm not, what is it, giving it too much amps and melting the hole or melting the base metal. So we're going to slowly increase our our amps until we start seeing a puddle. And we're gonna add filler wire. And we're just gonna go ahead and carry it down. All right, you see the big difference here? We're not having a massive puddle. We're controlling the heat, controlling our technique, and we're getting ripples effects. It's more defined. And if we look at this on the back side when we get done welding, we'll have a little bit of penetration. You could tell there's a lot of difference here. Our puddle is not big. You see everything is more consistent besides me dabbing. I mean, I don't do this every day, but our heat effect zone is a lot smaller. See this one, how big it is? Look how big that was. Just compare that. It's a big difference. Let's look at the back side. We're good here. See it? We're not overheated. This is what you want to do. So if you're having problems at home blowing through your base metal, definitely correct your filler wire size. And also your tungsten is kind of important too. Tip number two is does your leads hang low or you're holding all the, all the weight up by your hand and your wrist of your leads. So instead of this three or four feet hanging off your hand, just do this, it's simple and easy. I mean, a lot of people don't think about it, especially beginners. Just go like this, shorten it up, and make sure it stays up there. And I'm only holding this right here, this weight. It's all about being comfortable and having good mobility. You want everything to stay steady with TIG. All right, so let's talk about the one uh, having the weight hanging off my wrist. So you can see I was trying to fight the weight, try and get steady, then I kind of got steady and try to get more consistent. And let's jump over here by just putting the weight, hanging off the weight off the table. So right here, I gave it too much power. You got right here, then I kind of controlled and focused back in and look how much straight I am. I mean, that's a big difference to the toes. It's nice and even and straight, that's what you want. So tip number three is keep your filler wire in the gas envelope. So you know your cup's about this wide, all right? So um, just imagine your gas is always going to come out right here or imagine a straight line. So always keep it inside. And when I stop, I basically keep it in there for a good couple seconds, let the uh, filler wire cool off too. 
If you don't do that, you're gonna have oxide. So I see this a lot just by walking by other welders doing this, that's bad. All right, you're actually contaminating that puddle. You can see the oxide, see how the, the oxide's burning? You can see them right on the, on the edge, see how, you can tell. Then your puddle will, will have a little smoke around it. They're telling you you're contaminating the puddle. You actually see this right here. See the black? That's because you're contaminating it. And you also can tell by the filler wire. All right, the one on the left is bad, it's contaminated. Um, that's why you don't pull your uh, filler wire out. You'll actually, your puddle will actually it'll feel sluggish and you'll notice black stuff on the outside of your toes when you get done welding. The one on the right is not contaminated. All right, tip number four is building up your muscle memory uh, if you're not having nice consecutive dimes. If you're like all over the place, far apart, close together. One great feature of this machine is the pulse setting on your machine or this machine. So we're gonna go ahead and set the pulse to one second and I'll show you how it's done. Step up. As soon as it goes off, you wanna step up. Step up, put it in. Step up, put it in. Step up, put it in. I usually step up for the puddle solidified at, like the leading edge of it. Just going like that. Pretty simple, huh? Yeah, that's like your guideline watching that pulse. If you don't have the pulse, you go 1001, 1001. All right. Definitely going to help you out for a show. All right, guys, remember, oh, did I beat it? I hope you guys learned something. I know these four tips will definitely help you become a better TIG welder. Learning is key on mancomfortwell.com. Weld mean, weld green.